Hello and welcome to my channel. I hope you're having an absolutely wonderful day. Today we're going to be talking about something extremely important and that is saving money at your current job. My first disclaimer is I am in no way a financial advisor. I get all of my financial background and advice from my mother, grandfather, and just honestly from personal experience. I was very fortunate to grow up in a household where the importance of saving money was stressed greatly throughout our entire lives. We were always encourage to save our money rather than spend it. Nowadays, I feel as if social media has really influenced us to think that in order to live a happy life, we need to one, have material things, and two, invest in new technology. And that is the way to become happy in society today. I personally believe that in order to live a more carefree life, financial stability is the absolute key. I would much rather know that I have the freedom to spend the money I want to spend whenever I'm going on vacation or whenever I'm going out to eat, rather than living paycheck to paycheck and spending a lot of extra money on random things that I don't particularly need. Something I always tell my incoming ninth graders in my AP class is, you need to make sure that you are working on your stuff right now as you come into my classroom. You need to be thinking about your GPA right now because this GPA is going to be accumulated throughout all four of your high school years. Whenever I have students in an AP class, I'm assuming that they're going to be going to college in the future because the whole point of taking the AP class is to potentially get that college credit. Now, if they decided that they weren't going to do all of their work their freshman year and they're going to bomb a class or get a really low grade and end up with a 2.0 GPA for my class itself, then that is going to dramatically influence the rest of their GPA throughout the entirety of their high school career. So why don't you start working on it now rather than waiting until your junior and senior year and you have to make up for all of the lost time. So this same thing applies to your finances. So if you're able to save up right now in your teens, early 20s, late 20s, early 30s, if you start saving up now rather than later, you're going to be a lot better off in the long run. So start thinking about your future self. And I'm so sorry, my dog keeps walking around and it's so quiet in here and it's just like, all I hear is the feet. Walt, please, please, you gotta stop. Go lay down, please. So I personally believe in order to live a carefree life, you need to have financial stability. And that is the way to happiness because you're not gonna be worried about living paycheck to paycheck. But imagine you saved a set amount of money for X amount of years and imagine yourself in your 40s or 50s. Where do you think you'll be? Do you think you'll have a house? Do you think you'll be comfortably supporting your family? Do you think you'll have that car that you wanted? Or where do you think that you would be in your 40s or 50s if you never saved up any money? Would you be living in a house that you owned? Would you be driving around a car that you have paid off? Think about yourself in the long run and how this could potentially help you. Now, obviously every single person has a different situation. You may be a single mom of three. You may be in a relationship and be living off of two incomes that are pretty decent. You may be in your early 30s and you haven't saved up for a while and you know, you know what? It's time. You think it is time to start looking at my expenses and the stuff that I've been spending on myself and figure out what do I need to do? How am I gonna get there? You might be fresh out of high school and you don't have any money yet and you're going off to college and you're like, okay, how am I expected to pay for my insurance and my dorm and my college whenever I'm only making this amount of money? So let's figure out how we can start saving now rather than later. So my main thing here, the main thing I wanna emphasize is regardless of what you make, you can always save something. My grandfather told me this story when I was growing up and he said that he used to work at a restaurant where he made 25 cents an hour busing tables. Him and his friends would always go down the street afterwards to an arcade where his friends that made the same income as him would go and spend all of their quarters on pinball machines. And my grandfather would always stand there and be like, why are you spending your money on this pinball machine on all four hours that you worked and you just blew all that money to just go back in tomorrow and do the exact same thing? He would always stand by and, and be like, I'm keeping my money because I don't want to end up not having any money at the end of the day after I work for four hours. That really resonated with me and I thought about, okay, if I save my money and spend it on the things that I actually need, or spend it more wisely than the rest of society, then I think I'll be doing better. 
With that being said, you can always save something out of your paycheck. Even if it's just five or $10, you're at least saving more than most people do. Based on a few studies and articles that I read recently, 60 to 65% of the United States population live paycheck to paycheck. So if you're saving something, you are doing better than 60 to 65% of the population. Make sure that you start saving money and please use these tips that I'm about to give you. The first thing you need to do in order to start saving money is to set your goals. Number one, figure out your why. Why am I going to save up money? Do I wanna buy a house in the future? Do I wanna buy a car? Do I want to be able to support my family? Do I wanna be able to have five kids? I want a big house. How am I gonna do that? Figure out what your goal is, and then that's going to lead to how you need to start saving. Next, thinking about the item that you want to be saving for. I highly, highly recommend that you start saving for an emergency fund. Let's say that something happens and your job lets go of 50% of their employees. You need to make sure that you have enough money saved up in your account for if something happens to your job. My grandfather, when I was growing up and I first got a job, he told me the first thing I needed to do was save up $2,500 in order to make sure that I am okay if something happened within the workspace. What I suggest nowadays is make sure that you save up at least two to three months worth of income. That way, if you lose your job, you have that buffer to find another job. And until that point, you'll be okay even if you're spending more money than you would want to. After you've saved up two to three months of income, now what are you saving for? So you need to determine your goal, and that leads us to number two. You need to determine your goal amount for what you're trying to save. Number three, you need to identify what your timeline is gonna look like. Are you going to be saving up for one year, two years, three years, five years, six months? What does your timeline look like in order for you to reach that goal? If you're trying to purchase a house, you probably are looking to save about 20% down, and you're also gonna have to consider other fees and expenses that come with purchasing a house. What is your baseline? What is that 20%? If you need to save up $75,000, then that is going to be your first goal. Next, how do you begin? The first thing I want you to do is identify the amount of bills and the cost that you have per month minus your actual income. Let's say that you're making $5,000 a month. Let's say that all of your expenses, including your living, your car payment, your student loan payment, your credit card bill, your groceries, your gas, let's say that all of that costs $3,000. So then you have $2,000 left over. So if you have $2,000 left over, obviously you have to put into consideration how much money do I spend aside from those basic bills, needs, and necessities and what else am I spending on top of that? If you've been making $5,000 a month, your bills are only $3,000, and you have nothing at the end of the month because you live paycheck to paycheck, then there's something going on there. You shouldn't be spending just $2,000 on yourself. Let's figure out what we can do. So then with that, you need to figure out a set portion of that income that you want to save. If you have $2,000 left over in your paycheck, the chances of you actually saving all $2,000 of that, that would be fantastic if you don't decide to go out to eat or purchase any clothes or go out to the bars with your friends. Great, good for you that you have the power to not fall victim to those situations. Rather, start setting reachable goals first. So let's say you decide, okay, I have $2,000 left over after all my bills, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save up $1,000 each month, and then I have that extra $1,000 buffer for if I want to spend money on myself. That doesn't mean that you should be like, I'm gonna spend exactly $1,000. That just means that, okay, I know 100% that I'm saving $1,000, and I have this just in case. That gives you a little bit more financial freedom, that way that you still know that I still have this left over just in case I do wanna go out with my friends, or I do wanna to go to the movies, or I want to buy that swimsuit because summer's coming up. The thing here, and number three, the main thing I want to enforce here is that whenever you decide what amount of money you're going to be saving, right when you get that paycheck, right when it hits your bank account, or right when you get that handheld check and you go take it to your bank, you need to make sure that you are putting that money away in your savings account and you tell yourself, this is 100% off limits. I never touch my savings account unless one thing happens, which is my emergency account needs to be breached because something crazy happened and or I don't have a job, or two, you've reached your goal 
and now you're able to purchase your house or now you're able to purchase your car. So that is the only time that you ever touch your savings account. But other than that, you are leaving it aside. You That thousand dollars, you are not gonna see it until you've absolutely reached your goals. So a lot of people struggle with this. It's really just a willpower thing. You need to make sure that you just tell yourself, I will never touch my savings account. And when you have the inkling to do it, look at it and be like, I told myself I am never touching my savings account. And even though I want to go buy those Doc Martens or that MacBook Pro, I need to make sure that I am reaching my goals before I dig into my savings account. So the next portion of this, I'm gonna break that down into another three rules whenever you're starting your savings journey. Number one is identify your spending habits for each month. This can be done in numerous ways. You can get apps like Mint that help you figure out exactly what you're spending on yourself for things that aren't necessities, or you could just be writing this down, pen and paper, every single time you spend something on yourself that's not 100% necessary, you are writing down exactly that amount. Or you can use a database or an Excel sheet in order to keep track of that stuff in a more organized fashion. And I personally love to use Notion in order to organize my database. I have this tab that shows the money spent on myself. And so for instance, I have my stuff that I've spent so far for February. So there are a few things that I'm not like 100% that I'm not like 100% happy about. But if I go down, I can look and see exactly what I spent in January because I'm currently filming this at the beginning of February. So, <laughs> as you see, I spent a grand total of $1,090.05 last month. Now, I when I saw this, because this is the first time I've actually put it down on paper, I typically use Mint and I really like typing this in because I'm able to determine like, okay, I really like type this in and I really did spend $202 here or so on. I see that I spent that much money and I'm like, there are a lot of places that I can cut this. So what I did was I put, were these things worth it and were they not? I put exactly what card or um, form of payment I used. So, and what date it took place. So obviously if you look at mine, there is a lot of food included here and there's movies and I did get the Notion Plus, which I'm so happy I did because I'm able to share all these links with my students and my golfers and my contractor and just everybody that needs to view any of the pages I have, I'm able to share the link with them. And it makes it very easy for me to share ideas and information. So 100% worth it. So I made sure that I put, yes, it was worth it. But all of these areas where I put no, I've been reconsidering this month. So I went to Summer Moon, which is coffee, if you're not from the area, and I put that it was not worth it. And then I went to Summer Moon again. It wasn't worth it. I went to On the Grind to get coffee and I said, no, it wasn't worth it. <laughs> on the Grind again, no. I went to the movies with some of my coworkers and I had a lot of fun with them, but I didn't like the movie itself. And I also spent like, I think $12 on popcorn and a drink. And I was just like, I do not think that this was worth it. Like, I feel like I didn't like the movie enough. So I put no. And then dessert after I had a tournament with my golfers, I put no. More Summer Moon. The Chick-fil-A I had that day just wasn't it. And I spent like $10 on the meal for myself. Not worth it at all. And then I have some of the stuff that I was happy about. And as you see, some of my like, higher priced expenses I did put were worth it. Like for instance, nails and dinner. And I got my nails done and this is something that I never used to do, but now that I have the financial freedom to do this, I, I do kind of like when my nails look nicer. So um, I've invested in all of this stuff to do my own nails at home. Like I got like the dip kit and I got like all of the stuff you need and it would take me hours upon hours to do my nails and then it would fall off literally within seven days. And I'm like, why don't I actually get it done professionally? And even if I spend 80, $100 on them, at least they stay on for an entire month and they look great. I've decided that that's fine. And then I did spend a lot of money on dinner that night when I went out with my husband. So it was a pricey night, but I thought it was worth it in comparison to on the grind and everything else. And then we went to Muck and Fuss for dinner. And for some reason that night it hurt my stomach. And I was just like, I felt like I didn't need to go there this day. And then we went to Texican with um, some of our coworkers and I did think that that was a worth it day because we had a lot of fun and 
it was a good experience. If I look at my nose, I probably could have saved a few hundred bucks at the very least. This month, I've been making sure that I am minimizing my going to get coffee and I did go to On The Grind on the second, but every single time after that that I've had the chance to get coffee, I've said no. And then also I had a tournament yesterday with some of my golfers and they were like, oh coach, we should go get, uh, we should go get ice cream after this. And I was like, you know what? I have the spreadsheet and I told them about it. And I told them that, that every single time I went to get ice cream, it was not worth it. So I told them I would go with them and I'd watch them eat their ice cream, but I am gonna go ahead and say no myself. But that's just a way that I've been keeping track of the money that I've spent on myself so far. And also if you see this funds from the past month, I like to reward myself with like habit tracking. So for instance, if I saved up more than I had lost, then I'm able to transfer that over to the next month for myself. And so that's exactly what I did. So this Gymshark sale ended up balancing out to this lower sum. And I personally think that the Gymshark stuff that I purchased is worth it because I wear it every single day. And the reason why I had to get some more Gymshark stuff is that my current leggings that I've had for about four to five years finally died. They are like, the seams are ripping and the logo's worn off and their brown or black stuff has faded to brown. And I'm like, you know what? This is something that I can actually spend my money on and I know 100% that I will wear it. And once I try it on, whenever it gets here, I will make sure that all the stuff fits me and if it doesn't, I'll send it back and then I can update my sheet on what I've spent on myself. With that, you need to determine what items and things can be cut or minimized in order to save up more for each month. Which purchases are worth it and which ones aren't and that's of course what I did here. Are they worth it? Are they not? Be careful about what you spend your money on and just identify on do I want this luxury now or do I want even larger luxuries in the future. And then once you figure out those habits and whether they're worth it or not, then adjust for the next month. Like I said, I don't think that I should be consuming as much coffee as I do because one, sometimes it really hurts my stomach and two, I just don't feel the need for coffee, especially if I'm getting enough sleep at night and I go to the gym in the morning and I just, I feel good. So why do I need to drink coffee? Once you get the hang of this and begin to see the area of wants start to decrease, then you can start saving more money. So let's say that you did have that $5,000 check, $3,000 bills, you have $2,000 left over. You started saving $1,000. And then if you started at spending all of the stuff that was left, you're like, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of coffee, I'm gonna get rid of desserts, I'm gonna get rid of eating out sometimes. And now I've minimized it to $500. So now you can look at, okay, maybe instead of saving only $1,000, I can save $1,250 or I can save $1,500. That's just gonna be based on whatever you're most comfortable with and what you can do. Now, if you're someone only making $3,000 a month and your bills and expenses are $2,500 and you only have $500 left, you just need to make sure that you are being a little bit more strict on your wants and things that aren't necessities. So you need to really cut down the eating out. You need to not get coffee. You need to not go out to the bars on the weekends. And that way you can minimize those expenses. And once you minimize that, you can start saving more. And if you're someone that has the capabilities of being able to not spend anything on your wants, you can save $500. But if you want to give yourself some leeway, you can go ahead and save $250 and then give yourself that $250 in order to go out and eat or go out with your friends and um, buy that shirt that you've been wanting. Identify exactly what you need in order to be moving towards your goals and saving something. Next video, I'm gonna be talking about some tips and tricks for saving your money as a young adult, in addition to these initial things that you need to instill. So please stay tuned, subscribe to this channel if you like this content, and I hope you have a great day. Bye.